folks, welcome to MD Rodman channel. On today's video, as you can see, we're out here on this nice fresh beaver den. Uh, we're looking to catch ourselves some late prime beaver. And uh, typically I wouldn't be targeting beaver. Uh, the market is in the toilet. I don't even know if we're going to have a sale for most of the pelts. But I do know that uh, there's an awful lot of spring bear hunters, myself included, that love to use the carcasses of beaver. Um, after we've stripped all the, the usable meat and stuff off of them, the, uh, the carcasses are great for spring bear. Uh, also, the price of castor these days is way up. So there is some benefit. And uh, to go along with that, this is a nuisance wildlife job here. So I don't know if you can see, uh, this whole area has been flooded. I'm actually standing on what used to be the road. <laughs> so uh, this is the road. So landowner wants the beavers gone. So we're here to uh, accomplish a whole whack of different things. Uh, this set's real easy that I'm going to walk you through right here. What we've got here is a typical, uh, what I would call a beaver slide. So the, the new house is up here. <coughs> Excuse me. The new house is up here. Big pile. Little skim of ice on. It's like December the 10th or 9th or somewhere in there. Got a little bit of ice on here. It's pretty cold. It's like minus 10 right now. But we've got a spot where the beavers are coming up out of the main dam and then turning this way. You can see all their secondary dam, right? So. They've got a huge area flooded in back where they've been hauling food all fall long. And their secondary dam is almost actually as big as their, their, their main dam. So they've been using this little up and over run to get from the main dam where the, where the house is down and check out their secondary dam to make sure nothing's leaking and all of that stuff. So we're going to use this to our advantage by just putting a simple con bear set, one at the top, just right in the flow we're going to try to not disturb anything so i know you see a lot of beaver choppers and guys will tell you oh tear a big hole in the dam and put your trap in and they'll come fix it and and that's right they will but the problem is in my experience when beavers come to fix stuff they got sticks and trees and twigs and mud and everything else all in their in their mouth and in their paws so they're coming at your trap with a whole bunch of row what i want is i want a simple clean set where the beaver is just coming over naturally because the toads are using this slide anyway. Now I've been around this dam for about the last 15 or 20 minutes and I, I've kind of walked the perimeter. There's about four of these places where the beavers are using the natural slides. Because this is a nuisance wildlife job and I want to get all of these beavers as fast as I can, I'm going to put a 330 common bear at the top of every single one of these slides. Okay? Another, uh, I'll, I'll show you. Whoa, I'm going to fall in the brook. Woo. That's close. Don't do that, please. I'll get you wet real quick. Um, another one of the things that I'm going to show you after the trap is set here, find a place to stand, after the trap is set, is I'm going to show you a little trick to encourage them to come over the uh, come over the bank, right? So this is a pretty simple setup. Anybody that's done a whole lot of beaver trapping has done these before, but I'll show you anyway, just in case you're brand new. Uh, Listen, if you haven't yet subscribed to the Indy Wildman channel, we sure would appreciate it. We're just getting going here, and uh, we'd love to have you along. If you like the content, you can go ahead and push that bell. That way you get notified when we upload new stuff. So, this is real easy to do. All you're going to need is a couple of little small sticks off the dam. Make sure that your sticks are small enough that they fit through the spring holes of your 330 conibears. I like the 330s for beaver trap, and I know there's all different sizes and kinds, but I like the 330s to give you lots of room. Catch the odd otter too, right? So there you go. Just a couple of sticks like that's all we need. And I'm going to need a roll of wire, because I am going to want to wire this off. So this corner bear seems to have lost its chain, so I'll just use a piece of wire to, to wire it. I believe this is a Victor con of air. You can use whatever your favorite sets are, of course, but I like Victors because they're cheap. I like them because my grandpa used to use them, and that's what I learned using. So I've always uh, I've always purchased Victor traps. I don't know why. Just have, I guess. I'm sure there's better traps out there, but these are the ones I got. So here we go. So just a just a piece of toggle wire. Most anything that gets hit by a 330 isn't going to last very long, so you don't have to worry about a lot of struggle, but 
you don't want your trap out there in the water either. So. Okay, these ones are pretty simple to make. I'm going to take my, my uh, trigger. I'm going to spread it out in the full, full V pattern like that. Okay, so I want my trigger to be cover as much of the inside of that trap as I can. I'm going to set it. Keep my, keep my safety hooks on. But I'm going to set it so that it's just barely above the water. So I want it to be above the surface, just about like that. And bend my springs down. I'm going to bend my springs so that I've got like an inch or two inches right there. So I don't want it right on the ground because it can get caught up in sticks and stuff and I don't want it up above because I don't want a beaver to come along and bump their nose into it and think, oh, oh that's not right. So I want it just below the surface of the water but just up off the ground. Okay? So, as you can see, I'm hanging on to this. I don't want the safety spring to let go yet. And I take my stick, I go down through the spring Get that in the mud. Get my other stick and I go down through. Get that in the mud. Okay, so now I've got that trap so it won't fall over. I bend this one a little more. There we go. There. Okay, so that's getting in there like that. All right. Keep your, keep your springs bent so that your trap is the way you want it. Go ahead and take the safety catches off. And then I set my trap the way that I want it. Hopefully, the way that I want it. Okay. So that's it. Now, we've still got a little bit of work to do, but for the most part, that's what I want. It's pretty stable. The trap's not going to fall over. My two sticks at an angle are helping that. Now, if you do this and you find that the trap is too tippy and you think, well, something might knock it over, you can take a third stick, find the right one here, take a third stick, and put it through at a really sharp angle like this, it doesn't have to be through the spring, but put it at an angle and then just wedge it into the top corner of that trap, in between, in between the the bars. That'll keep any movement forward or backward like that from happening. Okay? So this natural slide that they're using anyway, beaver can come up and go through that. I've got my I've got my my V spread quite a ways apart. That'll give me a good suitcase catch, right? So that's gonna get them across the neck and across the back because they're gonna be about halfway through that before it snaps. Don't forget to wire your trap off. Once something's in that corner here, they're not going to last for very long. But you do want it wired off so you don't find it in the brook. Alright, there you go. Pretty simple. Quick and easy. This is what we look like. This is our stabilizing stick if we need it. Just a natural flow up and over. Down into the secondary dam. Now like I said, I'm going to set up about four of these across the length of this dam the whole way around at all the different spots for this. Um, depending on the laws in your province or state about how much you can mess with the beaver dam, the trick to these here, if it's okay, in your, in your place, you go down into the secondary dam and you cut a huge hole. So set up, set up your traps across these up and over runs, leave them as natural as you can like this, and then go down into the secondary dam and cut a huge big hole and start draining water. The beavers will realize real quick that they're losing water at their secondary dam, and they'll head down to fix it, right? So then you're gonna have everybody using these established travel routes to get down to fix the hole in the secondary dam, right? So anyway, uh, that's it for this one. And hope this is something that helps you out in your line. And uh, until next time, happy hunting from the MD Wildman channel.